Hi guys and welcome back to my podcast where we talk about all things weight loss. On this specific episode, I have Gianna. She got BSG on December 17th and she is doing amazing. She opens up about so many different things. She talks about how much support she's getting from her family, um, her struggles after BSG, trying to figure out a schedule and staying into routine. She talks about how important therapy is after um weight loss surgery right just trying to figure out all of the motions after weight loss surgery and how important the mental health of this is and how difficult it can be because if you are like me you would use food as a coping mechanism when everything is hitting you in life so she really really talks about how therapy has helped her and how she really recommends for people to reach out to therapy after weight loss surgery and so much more. If you guys haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment down below and enjoy. Okay. So like I told you, like I just told you, I haven't done this in so long. So I feel like I'm a little rusty, but basically how I always kind of start off is just like your name, where you're from, maybe like where you got your surgery, your stats, whatever you kind of want to open up with. Um, so yeah. So my name is Gianna. I was born or I was born, raised and currently live in Tampa, Florida. Um, never really moved. I've moved all around Tampa, but never out of the state. Um, I got my surgery December 17th, 2020, last year, about three months ago at um, Memorial Hospital here in Tampa. I went through um, a program with Florida Surgical Weight Loss Centers. Okay. Um, his name is Chico. Um, my insurance fortunately covered it. I did have to like make my out of pocket, meet my out of pocket expenses, which was like $2,500. So over the course of six months, I paid about $2,500. Like you pay for every visit. I had yeah. to meet with, um, the surgeon, the nutritionist. I had to have a psych evaluation, um, the EGD. And then I had to meet like, a. they made you fill out these weight loss exercise logs and it was like three months worth. and they didn't require me to like lose any weight but when I started the process like in J uh, July I weighed uh, at 311 okay and then I had actually stopped the process because I had um, somebody in my life that was like you know maybe we should just do this on our own and I had battled with it back and forth and I was like okay, do it on my own so um, after our relationship ended literally like the week after I was like, no, nope, I'm doing this for me. Made the appointment again. And when I came back, I actually weighed 316. So I had gained five pounds in like a three month time. Yeah. Um, and then I, as of three months, I am down 50 pounds now at two six five. So it feels awesome. great. That is yeah. amazing. And how tall are you? Five one. So I'm okay. super short. Yeah, because, yeah, I'm 5'4", I was 3'04", so, I mean, we're, we're pretty close, and um, mm -hmm. you're shorter than me, yeah, but, like, weight-wise, we were pretty much the same, and it's it's crazy. It all happened so fast. So, you said, because I, I wrote down, like, a couple of notes. So, you got it in December, right? Mm hmm And already, we're in, I always forget what month we're in, because I'm March. off work, but <laughs> March, <laughs> I'm going back to work soon, because of, like, I've been off because of my tummy tuck, so I'm like, I need to get back into just knowing what day we're on, you know, mm -hmm. but it happens so fast and you've already lost so much weight. How are you feeling now? Like energy wise, how are you feeling? Honestly, I don't, it's like, I'm not a poster child for the surgery and it, I hate when people, I, I don't hate when people, but it's like, I wish I gave a better answer when people ask that. Cause I do have energy. However, I'm very tired. Like, yeah. Tired quickly. Like I wake, I sleep so much better. Like I used to be a terrible sleeper. I had sleep apnea, but I never had a machine. Um, snored really bad. Um, however, I sleep way better. So I wake up great, but I get tired by the, like seven, eight o'clock. I'm like, man, I could take a nap. By three, I could take a nap. But when yeah. it's time for bed, I knock out. Um, yeah. So I don't exercise as much as I would like to. That's like my goal for like this. Now, next three months, like my first, like three months to focus on personal development and just like getting my mind right. Oh, yeah. Now this month, I'm like, all right, I got to start exercising. Like, I don't want to let this tool go to waste. Like, you wanted to lose weight. Like, it, you got to do the work now. So, for sure. Um, 
the energy is there, but I just want to put it into to motion for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, what, um, are you at normal food now? So, cause I know everyone's program is so different. Like for me, people always ask me, like for me, I was on liquids for six weeks after surgery, but that was yeah. because I, um, after one week he wanted to put me on like the puree and I had an egg and it grossed me out completely. And, um, it grossing me out. I didn't even want to drink water and stuff. So I became dehydrated, ended me back into the hospital, which then ended up, I know I remember I was leaving, so I, and I was like, okay, what am I eating? He's like, you're on liquids. <laughs> like, you're going to be on liquids until I see you next time. And I'm like, when's that? And he's like, like in a month. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. I've already been on liquids for like two weeks and now a whole other month. Like, are you joking? So then like for me, I feel like maybe that's why I lost so much weight in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. so I was on liquids. I mean, of course, you know? And then I, I'm trying to remember when I got into solids. So when did, are you on solids right now? Or when did you? Yeah, Mm -hmm. when did you go and on solids so I had to do the first three days after surgery was clear liquids okay then for 10 days after that was full liquids um so like soups I could blend things protein shakes and then day 21 it was soft foods which was like for us it, that was not an egg it was like um now you, okay, no, I, I, I digress. I go back. The, the full liquor, soft foods with soups blended, puddings, jellos, cottage cheese, yogurt, popsicles. Yeah. Then day 40 is when we could do soft foods. Okay. So a month after we got to soft foods, which was like the eggs. And I remember like, I would try, <laughs> I would try so hard to be like, okay, let me just experiment a little bit eat a chip and see if I could do it and they're like no couldn't do it and then um but like I would say about eight weeks so about two months after was full f everything yeah and it's scary because you think I mean I remember me I was so scared because I was like okay I don't know what's gonna make me sick I don't know how I'm gonna be after you know there's some people that never get sick there's people that are always sick like it's so different for everyone I've talked to so many different people and everyone's story is different i've only thrown up twice in mm -hmm. a year and what am i at like a year and eight months now i'm almost like to my two years and i've only got sick twice and that was because i drank water too fast in the beginning and because i ate um i went to del taco and it was still like a protein bowl but as soon as i ate two bites i was like what but i've eaten like pizza hot cheetos i've eaten like everything cake uh, mm -hmm. Oh, and I had cake one time. It was like a crepes. My dad loves crepes, and my stepmom got him a cake of like layers of crepes. Oh, okay, this like, thick. And I had one bite, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" But I didn't throw up. I felt like I was going to. Um, but I just feel like it's so different for everyone. Like, have you experienced dumping syndrome? I experienced more like having to run to the bathroom yeah. um, after I had like a runny egg, like a junky egg. Yeah, um, I don't know what it was, but it's like I, a scrambled egg was okay, but it, it's weird. Eggs make me full really fast. Oh wow! Like a salad, I salad fine, but eggs make me full really fast. Um, but I remember I had a donkey egg, and I was like, "Oh, I have this with like a piece of toast." Nah, that didn't work out too well. And then refried beans too made me like super nauseous. I was like, really? "Okay, not that again." Mm -hmm. Okay, but I. Like black beans, fine. Like black that's what beans I was gonna ask you because I I'm not huge on beans for some reason. I think because they're high in protein, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like there's a reason why I started eating them. <laughs> but um, I do black beans, and and I before like no two years ago I'd be like uh uh because even refried beans I would only eat it randomly like take a bite. Mm -hmm. Um, but the same thing with me. I, I think it's it's just greasier, I guess. But black beans are fine for me too. But it's the egg. A lot of people I eat eggs now. But very yeah. like random, like if it's like in an omelet or something like that. But I'm not huge on eggs. But I've heard a lot of people get sick with eggs after surgery. So it's like a pretty popular thing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I've just been making egg whites, and like that's been really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now I can pretty much eat everything. Um, I haven't really tried to do anything like eating out wise. Um, I did go to dinner with some friends last night. I had like a crab cake and that was okay. Um, yeah. 
I dabble here and there, like, oh, I'll get, like, a French fry. I remember I did, I did go to Chick-fil-A because I wanted a grilled chicken sandwich. So I'm like, I'll just eat the grilled patty. Well, they ended up giving me fried. I got home, and I was like, are you kidding me? Uh, like, uh, no. I got to Chick-fil-A in the first place. Yeah. So I started it, and literally, I felt it, like, right here in my throat. I was like, oh, God, I can't. I can't. I can't. I got so scared that I was going to throw up. But I didn't. But I was like, I'm never getting this fried sandwich again. Well, not yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. I, uh, I know. And it's like, you're trying to make the right choices. And then look what happens. That's happened to me so many times, even with like my Starbucks, like ev anyone that like really follows me knows I get Starbucks like every single day. And there was one time where I knew that they gave me regular syrup. Uh, Cause I get the sugar free syrup. They have a sugar free vanilla and a sugar free cinnamon dulce. And I knew it, like I didn't look at the label and I, I took two drinks of it and I immediately got a headache and I was like, wait, wait, wait. And I looked and it was regular syrup and it's all sugar, obviously, you know? And I was so upset because it was like, I don't know, my lunch or something at that point, but you know what I mean? And especially if you're like starving and they ruin it, you're like, no, Ugh, that's the worst. You you get decaf coffee or you just get regular? I get regular. And like right now, what time is it? Well, I'm it's yeah 650 and it's so weird because we're like you're getting one right now i'll go to sleep like i think i'm like immune to it i don't know but like my sister-in-law oh no she didn't get the decaf right now too so she's gonna be up late but she usually gets <laughs> decaf mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know i think i'm yeah i think i'm immune to it because i drink it so much yeah because i know my doctor was like strictly like don't get caffeinated girl i still i get it i, lo I love my coffee yeah I'm like, I did can't. he tell you like for life caffeine yeah see because that's what they told me too and I was like and it's crazy because I wasn't big on coffee mm -hmm. before at all I don't like hot coffee like I won't drink hot coffee um at all I can be freezing and I'm drinking an iced coffee mm -hmm. but I wasn't big on it but because of the protein and I'm not big on breakfast I don't I'm not big on breakfast I don't want to eat eggs every day I don't it's just, I'm not hungry, but I know that I have to eat because I know that that was one of the main reasons why I got to 300 pounds was because I never would eat in the morning and then I would eat till like one or two, you know what I mean? And then you binge, obviously. So that, I know that I like it and it gets my metabolism going and I know that I'm getting my premier in, you know, my protein and I like it. So, and I make it at home. I've even like tried to, I bought like pumps and stuff to like, tell myself to like make it at home and don't go to Starbucks <laughs> but it just doesn't taste hard it doesn't and I'll give you that it does not like I I can try I'll do like the Nespresso pods and like put it in the fridge the night before and then the morning out I'm like all right put it with the thing and I have the syrup but I'm like no, it don't taste the same it don't no. taste the same what syrups do you use I have the sugar-free caramel and then vanilla I've never tried the cinnamon dulce, but that sounds really good. No, the one at Starbucks is so good. So I do two of the vanilla, sugar-free vanilla, and then two of the cinnamon dulce. So it's because if I used to do the cinnamon dulce like alone, and it's it's very it's very strong, um, but when I do two and two, it like evens it out. So it's it's really good. You should try it. And I always do the caramel shake. Do you do Premier? Yeah, I say you do the caramel. I I go back and forth caramel. Yeah, yeah, caramel or which one? uh the vanilla one. Oh yeah have you tried the cafe latte one they have yeah um, no it's whatever I, it's okay like i'll drink it like i definitely drank it when i was on pre-op and post-op me too um, <laughs> but now that i'm like i have coffee i'll just drink coffee <laughs> yeah no yeah i'm like and then they just came out with a new one but i haven't tried it and i haven't seen it in person but it's just on amazon it's like a peanut butter something peanut butter chocolate, chocolate or something. Right? yeah have you tried it or no no, so I'm like not committed to buy like a full 15 pack because that's all that they have. I'm like hoping that they come out with a four pack soon so I can at least try it and then I'll commit to like the Yeah, pack. that's how I was when the pumpkin one because they the pumpkin one isn't new, like it wasn't new last year, but they only have it during season. And I didn't remember what it tasted like. And I was like, I don't want to buy 15 because what if it's gross, you know? And I'm yeah. just like, uh, but no, the, the pumpkin, are you big on pumpkin? Yeah. I feel like you either have to love it, you either love it or hate it. Like, that's how yeah. it is. And the pumpkin one is so good. Um, I cinnamon roll ones, too. Those are good. They're good. And I think I burnt myself out because um, I had them a lot for when they came out because I was excited mm -hmm. for the flavor. But my caramel is my go-to, always. But I don't like yeah. how it tastes by itself. I can eat 
second day. Someone was like, do you drink them alone? And I was like, honestly, no. And the other day before I got to Starbucks, I'm like, let me try this by itself because I don't even remember what it tastes like, like by itself. And I was like, mm, no. <laughs> and so I remember like even during the pre-op, I would just chug them because it got to the point where I had to do two weeks of liquid. And I, I would just wake up, chug it real quick just to get the protein in and feel full quick. And I was like, now I can't do that. So like, I have to try and save it. But those, yeah. the tastes of and shake now, I'm like, get it away. Uh, uh, I know it's hard. And then like, if you do something too much, you get over it. You know what I mean? So, um, and then I know earlier you were mentioning about like being tired. Are you taking multivitamins? Which ones are you taking? So I actually just switched this week. Um, I was on. I think a bariatric advantage one okay. the free was my insurance. Like I got it for free. So I did that and it was a chewable one. It was so nasty. Which then one I, was it? Was it the mixed fruit one? Do you remember? Uh, it's it, they weren't the chewy, not like the starburst consistent. It like, ones. it like melts in your mouth. I just <laughs> chewed it. And they're like, they're pretty big, right? Yes, they were big. Oh. Because that, that's what I did for my first year. And I actually have a video on my YouTube about them because I like them. And I know other people are like, they're disgusting. But I like them because they gave me a lot of energy. And um, But now that I eat more food, it's so weird because even when I would get blood work on those, things would mm -hmm. still come off a little weird. Um, I would be low on things, but then it was weird because then I would be high on other things that because it's such a, you know, it has so much... Uh, nutrients or whatever inside of that vitamin that other things they were like wait why is this so high and I'm like well I take this vitamin and then you know like doctors general doctors they don't know like the mm -hmm. details when it comes to VSG so when I would show them it they would read it and they were like oh my gosh like it's so high on certain things you know so I mean I stopped taking it now and now I just take like a I don't even know the brand I get it at Sam's Club but it, I'm fine now but I think it's because I eat more now where before I couldn't, so I would feel so tired. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely don't eat as much as I should. Um, just because like some days I wake up, I'm so hungry. And then like today, I'm just not hungry at all. And I'm like, okay, I know I'll get, if I drink protein shakes or like the protein water, I can get it in because it's like, I can drink liquids all day, but it's just like actually eating. I don't like the sensation of feeling full. So it's like the fact that after four bites, you're full now. It's so hard. I know. And then if you're craving food, it's like, do I really want to eat four bites of chicken or do I want to eat like a bag of chips? Yeah. So it's a struggle. Mental it's struggle for sure. It is a struggle. What are your go-to like snacks? Like, uh, yeah, like um, your go-to snacks. Um, I'm like a big charcuterie person. So like uh, turkey cheese or like the little like salami and cheese packs. Um, I... When I go to Sam's or Costco, they have like the little mozzarella balls. So I'll do that, cheese sticks. Um, now that I can eat like vegetables, like raw vegetables, I really like like cauliflower and cucumbers mm -hmm. um, with peanut butter or ranch. Um, I'm trying to think. Quest chips are really good. Yeah. Um, that, um, apples and peanut butter. Have you tried the um, PB2 or do you do like just regular peanut butter? I just do regular peanut butter. Have you ever tried have... PB2? No. Mm -hmm. No? It's pretty good. But I mean, if you're huge on peanut butter, then you're going to notice the difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, yeah. Just because like me, I mean, peanut butter is high in calories. But I mean, yeah. if you don't do it every day. But I, my go-to for sure is like how you were saying, like the cheese. I always have like cheese sticks, turkey. I'll even get like the cheese sticks and like wrap it with turkey mm -hmm. um things like that that was in the beginning oh my gosh string cheese was like every it's day like, like all the time like it was the fastest do you do like yogurts like greek yogurts and stuff yeah like yogurt and i actually make like protein pudding so i'll get like a pack of like the sugar-free jello and then oh, like yeah. they say milk i i put a thing a premiere and then you mix it and like i have little packs in my fridge and that's a huge go-to to it and then um i'll put like nuts on top like uh chopped up almonds or cashews just to get like that extra protein and yeah. some sort of texture. Yeah. I feel like not having texture for so long <laughs> before and after, it's like all I want is crunchy. <laughs> oh, I'm big on crunch too. And that's like, I'm telling you chips and stuff for me, like that's my weakness. And now, like I told you, I don't experience dumping syndrome and stuff. So I can eat, I can eat a bag of hot Cheetos and I've done it. 
And sometimes I'm like, wait, like the first time I did it, I was watching a movie and that was one of my biggest things. Honestly, like my first year, I was so strict on myself, like so, mm-hmm. so strict on myself with everything. Like I never cheated. I never, like I was so strict. And then after my year, that's when I slowly was like trying like different things like cake, hot Cheetos, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, wait, I'm not getting sick. And sometimes I wish I would have got sick off of certain things because Thanks. I would never touched it again. You know, just like with eggs, I didn't touch them for like eight, nine months. Um, but I can eat so much more now and it's scary. It is scary because people always ask me like, do you still feel your restriction? And I do, I do feel my restriction when I'm eating what I'm supposed to be eating. Right. And you know, if I eat chicken, Ooh, like I, that restriction is there. I feel it. If I eat hot Cheetos, I don't feel a restriction. If I eat popcorn, I don't feel a restriction. Like I just don't, it's so weird. Um, but when I eat what I'm supposed to eat, I'm like, okay, you know what I mean? It's still there. Cause I'm, ugh. It's and then you, hear, you hear the people that like their taste buds change and all that stuff. I'm like, I even told my mom because my mom stayed with me a couple of days after. Yeah. And I don't even feel like anything happened because I'm just like, I can eat and drink regular. Like I don't have a problem. I, I, I almost asked like, did he really take my stomach out? Because I'm just like, nothing is affecting me. Yeah. And yeah, I wish it did. So I didn't eat the bad things, but I, I'm, I'm still a little too scared to try certain things for sure, but I haven't been as disciplined as I should be. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then I know you were saying like a uh, working out and stuff. Do you, do you work out or is that something that you're like trying to get into or? Um, I've never been a gym person. I enjoy like walking, um, Zumba I do like, but not ever like with weights or anything like that, but yeah. I want to start getting into that. Um, yeah. just to like tw- arms like get my legs tight like stuff like that but yeah I um, hate the gym bar. yeah I I'm not big on the gym either and like um I I had a personal trainer but the only reason why I had a personal trainer was because she had her garage is mm-hmm. a gym and yeah. I was like cool it's just gonna be me and her and no one's staring at me even now like even if I was to go to the gym right now I haven't been to a gym and I don't know how many years like I like over a decade probably and even yeah. right now even if I was to go I would still feel super like oh you know what I mean because it's kind of like I mean especially with COVID ugh. I don't know how it no. is over there but huh wearing a mask and going to the gym that's too is, much is that you guys have to do that in Florida too yeah mm-hmm. yeah they so, have to wait there. How? how I'm huffing and puffing as is no how do you expect me to run on the treadmill or do a set of whatever and then breathe and yeah, then you're like, sweating a sweater. My, husband, so. my husband goes to the gym um and he has to, and he wears a mask and I'm like you're fine with it he's like yeah and I'm like no there'd be no way like I wouldn't be able to do it I won't attempt to do it number one I if I'm wearing a mask to walk in the grocery store I'm like waiting for the moment I can rip it off because I I hate it you know mm-hmm. like I understand why we have to do it but I hate like I just can't breathe mm-hmm. <laughs> so, huh I said it's uncomfortable and then it's like I sweat I was so when you have it and then you're sweating it's like you're eating your sweat no Mm-mm. no no it's it's rough but yeah the I mean I started with my personal trainer way before COVID um yeah. but it was it was it was cool because it was just me and her and we did she focused so much on weight training not cardio and, and I know a lot of people always think that if you do weight training you're you're not going to lose weight or like mu- obviously muscle does weigh more than fat or whatever you know what I mean but mm-hmm. People always ask me if that slowed down my weight loss and uh uh-uh, absolutely not. And I started around, I can't remember exactly, but it was like two and a half, three months post-op. That's when I really started. For the first couple months, I didn't work out at all. I didn't have energy. So that's why mm-hmm. when you mentioned earlier how you didn't have energy, that was me too, because you're eating so little. You it mm-hmm. you don't have the energy. Like yeah. honestly, you know, and then you start eating a little bit more, a little bit more, and you do have more energy. But um, and even like back then, I had such a not just my food schedule was like, I was super on it, but it was also my sleep schedule. Like I would go to sleep early, like nine, like was the latest. Um, and I would get up at five to work out. Like I never let anything ruin that. And I always say like that year I was really selfish because it was about me, but everyone around that, around me knew that, you know, I don't have kids. So I didn't have to like stress about that. Um, and my husband knew, like, I love you, but like, I'm sticking to my schedule and like, you know, but cool. He lost, he lost 80 pounds too. Like in the Mm -hmm. first, 
year with me. Um, and it's because of like such a drastic change and everything, you know, um, and everyone yeah. around me just knew that I was gonna, I wasn't gonna cheat. Um, but you find different ways. I still went out to eat with my family. My family's huge on food. So it's like, oh, yeah, I my from my time background and we all want to get together it's all food or counters the food and it's I'm so blessed and thankful that my family is just so supportive and they've been like my backbone through this whole journey that it's like they make sure now that when I'm there they have something for me yeah. or they have like an option for me so good that's mm -hmm. what I was gonna um that's what I was gonna ask you uh, fam like your family support how were they when you like told them like those close to you like how were they when you told them about it were they kind of like or were they like 100 percent with it oh. so i kind of struggled with weight my whole life and yeah. it was more like i actually went through the process about five years ago okay. um at a different hospital and I just uh, i didn't go through with it um at that time i was like 26 maybe a little bit younger Okay. and a similar go to like whatever but one of their requirements was you had to go to a support group and I remember like going into the support group and they had like three speakers and one of the speakers was like I've gained my weight back um it's really not a permanent tool what? the other one was like I keep taking I she's like I can't eat steak and potatoes anymore the other one was like um you'll never be able to drink alcohol again and I don't drink anyways but like I was but, like, you, but you can I'm, you can drink alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I not a steak anymore. Like, I can't eat my rice and beans. Like, I can't, <laughs> whatever. I was like, no. Nah. So literally, that was my last appointment. Uh, the next day, I canceled. I was like, absolutely not. I'm not doing this. And then I actually did Herbalife for a little while. And I lost about 30, 40 pounds and found a great community, too. But it just wasn't for me. Like, I didn't like the, the restrictions of, like, two shakes a day. And I, it didn't fit my lifestyle. So... I stopped that, but I do love their products. Um, I still have them, but um, during that process of when I gained my weight back, my family would suggest, you know, like you should go through with it again. I think it'd be happy, good for you. Like you're so young, yeah. you don't have any like responsibility. As far as kids, like just do it now. You'll be thankful later. And so I actually met a girl at work and she did it, was like hyping it up. And I was like, you know, this is true. Then she introduced me to other people that my job. And I picked their brains and I was like, you know, maybe I can do this. Yeah. And so when I found this program, it was just so good. And when I told my family, like, all right, I'm going to do it. They're like, oh my gosh, we're so happy for you. I had like one or two people there. They were more concerned of like, do you really think that you should go through like a procedure that you have to go under that's unnecessary? Yeah. It wasn't so much like you're taking the easy way out or nothing like that. Everybody was like, whatever you need, we'll be here for you. Because in reality, they were more concerned about my health yeah. because like diabetes does run in my you know health um um heart health runs in my family like um so they were just more concerned about that more than yeah. anything and I walking in my family I was always very insecure because I was one of the biggest people like my family is very fit they're gymnasts they're cheerleading they all of them work out we run we live in a baseball and football household um so we were all very active but knowing that I was overweight they they wouldn't make comments but it was more of like you need to do something yeah so when i they were all very happy and they still are very happy they're like my biggest cheerleaders like anytime i post a picture they're like good for you like yeah we're so proud of you so it is a good feeling. it's a very good feeling yeah that's awesome because i i have a very supportive family too and you know i've talked to a lot of people that it's completely the opposite and it's it's hard to relate and it's kind of like this is already hard enough you know what I mean? The whole, everything that you have to do and to have other people like, you know, like with me and my, like my husband, I can't imagine having a negative spouse during this. Like it just wouldn't work, you know, or like negative, like my parents, my parents were super supportive. I mean, my mom was a little concerned the same as you of like, kind of like, ah, like surgery, like the surgery, but not like why I was doing it or, you know what I mean? It was just like the mm -hmm. surgery part of it. Um, but yeah, everyone was super supportive. And I think that has a lot to do with, with your success and actually day to day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you have siblings? 
yeah, I have two sisters and both of them are really happy for me. Um, one lives in Chicago and the other one lives um, here in Tampa. So they were both very supportive too. Like I, I like I said, I'm just, just so blessed. Um, my best friends, they're the biggest cheerleaders too. It's just, it's so cool. Like to be able to like share that with them and know that like they're just so proud. That's so awesome. What do you think, what do you think has been, well, first of all, your sister, your sister lives in Chicago, you said? I yeah, love Chicago. my baby sister. I've been there. Oh, I've been there twice. Yeah, I've been there twice. And it's, it's so, it's so pretty. I love it so much. There are days where I want to move up there and then I see the snow and I'm just like, mm, I don't think I could do it. I know. I, I went, that we're time. there for New Year's one year and it was freezing it was freezing because uh my husband's uh cousin used to live in like downtown chicago so um mm -hmm. we went for new year's and it was like i don't remember how cold but obviously the windy city so it was like super windy and it was crazy but i would i would i told him that like when we're older i want to live there like i would live there like in downtown like for even if it was like yeah. a year or two just because it's so i loved it so much it's so pretty and I don't care about cold, like I do, I live in California. The weather here is like amazing. We have like the perfect weather where I'm at. But um, I don't know, I don't mind it. I've been to Alaska too when it was like negative 15 and everyone's like, what, how'd you even do that? But like, I did it, I don't know. I just adapt, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, yeah, I so what do you think, what do you think has been your biggest like struggle since surgery? Definitely the, eating portions and I, I say this because when I was overweight I really didn't know what eating disorders were and as I get older like I definitely recognize that I did suffer from binge eating yeah. and I everything that like if I could suggest one thing to any person who goes through with the surgery is get a food therapist or get yeah. some sort of therapist that specializes with food yeah because me personally, I was overweight because I was inactive and I ate way too much and I didn't eat good foods. Mm -hmm. So I now, if I have an emotional day or if I just want to eat, seeing a plate of food and measuring out four ounces, I'm like, I get frustrated. And I'm like, you know, I want to eat more. I literally want to eat more. And I like, I don't, I, I know why I can't, but that's not the point of having the surgery. Like the point of having the surgery was so that you don't binge anymore. And you can still have those bad habits, but that's probably the biggest thing. And, you know, I did start therapy and I did start like talking with people that are in the same like mental battle as myself. Because it's like, man, if I eat a salad, I should be able to eat a salad. Like why can't the surgery just restrict bad foods? Mm -hmm. But it don't, it doesn't work like that. So just that mental, you know, battle every day of making your food and you know, you're eating for nutrition. You're not eating for satisfaction. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm a fat girl at heart and I love food, but at the same time, like you eat what you need, not what you want. So that has definitely been the biggest thing for sure. It is, I know. And it, and like, I don't want to be negative, but it's still like that for me, <laughs> even two years, you know, it's a struggle. And I'm, I was and even sometimes now like I mean I can't binge like I used to but yeah. there's definitely moments like I told you eating a bag of hot Cheetos I would consider binge eating because mm -hmm. I'm just like I'm just eating it and it's when I'm emotional or where I'm like oh I had a bad day or whatever you know and I don't want to get back to that like it's very I mean I'm sure you've seen it people that gained it back like you said that lady the speaker that was supposed to be a motivational speaker <laughs> motivate you to do it did the opposite but I mean, you can gain the weight back. And that is a reality of the surgery, you know? Um, and I see it. I definitely can see how, because now, like I said, I can eat a little bit more. And what if I did decide to just live off hot Cheetos? <laughs> like I could gain my weight back. You know what I mean? Cause I know I can eat a yeah. lot of them. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's hard, but I was definitely a binge eater too. I, like I told you, I didn't eat breakfast. So then at night I was like, what do I eat? Right. I could eat a whole pizza, like literally, like it, it was insane. Sure. I like wouldn't get full. I was like, dude, what is happening? Like, no. how you just keep eating and yeah. eating and eating. And it's like, I would block out my body from telling me like, stop because I didn't need your full. Yeah. It's, it's and it's, 
and now like as I gotten older and like now that I I, I have mm, not taught myself but made myself more knowledgeable on the fact of like recognizing when you feel like you're about to emotionally eat and find a different habit mm -hmm. and find a different out, outlook or output outlet <laughs> of yeah. you know going for a walk or go read a book like do something else besides grab that snack and don't restrict yourself either like if you feel like you want a bag of chips you can eat a bag of chips like there's nothing wrong with that and but it's a matter of recognizing when it is binging compared to when you just want a snack Absolutely. and it, it's hard but i am definitely thinking well that's why i tell everybody get a therapist like if you can get somebody or somebody who's knowledgeable and nutritionist that can you know tell you those red flags when you feel it because if not you're gonna fall down a really dark rabbit hole no yeah and i agree and honestly like i didn't have a therapist and i don't have a therapist and it's something excuse me and it's something that i am considering because now um like i told you like now i can eat more so now i feel like i don't want to go back that route and i can easily gain 20 pounds and then 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and then it equals to 100 and you know um and then mm -hmm. that's scary so i definitely want to look into one just because I mean, we're human, you know, and it can happen slow where you gain your weight back. And I'm, I'm terrified of that. Obviously we all are, you know, I'm sure there are other ways to like develop good habits as well. Like I'm not saying that everybody has to get a therapist because one, they're expensive. Sometimes insurances don't cover them. Like I'm fortunate right now that like during this COVID time, like my insurance is covering it. So I'm just super thankful. It. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, if you can go on YouTube and just find good habits or better discipline, like characteristics that you can follow, do that because we're human. I mean, we're all going to resort to some sort of, you know, how do you handle stress? How do you handle pressure? And especially now during COVID, we're at home all the time. Like, how do you handle being home? How do you handle being away, being antisocial with and not wanting to be antisocial you know these people you know that are extroverts like one of my really good friends she's like i hate being home because she's just such an extrovert and me i'm like i kind of love it because i'm yeah. an introvert but now i'm getting to or i'm getting itchy that i'm like i just want to see people i just want to like be able to go to dinner without having to worry of how many people are there if this person has covid or it's just it's a lot I know, isn't it crazy how everything is right now? It's insane to me. Like, I can't believe that this is reality right now. It, it like, I go to the store and look around. Huh? Mm -hmm. I said, and I know you're in California. You're way more strict than Florida. Florida's like, COVID who? <laughs> no, yeah, I know. I was going to say that, but I was like, I don't know if that's just like the news or what, you know? But like, no, yeah, California is pretty strict. We're like, I'm, where I'm located, I'm an hour from LA and an hour from San Diego. Um, LA obviously has been really strict, right? Cause there's like a million people there. Um, but where I'm at, I mean, it's, they just like kids just started going back to school this week. Um, for, it's been a whole year and they're going back to school this week, but it's only twice a week for like three hours a day. That's it. So and that's, that's all, huh? That's all kids. Um, well this week was, was, a uh, transitioning, uh, elementary school. Next week, like my brothers are middle school and high school. Next week, it's high school, middle school and high school. Um, my brothers aren't gonna go back. That's the decision, like that my mom made and they made, just because yeah. it's it's twice a week. You're going for three hours, um, and you, you literally are in a glass box. They have it's legit glass around your desk, and my what. My brother's very active um, and he will not be successful in that environment. He will get in trouble day one. And it's like, why are we gonna send him to school to fail? Like, I don't see that at all. Like they can't eat at school. Like it's just ridiculous. So um, they're not gonna go back. So they're doing good on Zoom and stuff and they're fine. You know, it sucks, but it is what it is. But yeah, we're barely right now are doing that. Um, barely right now they're starting to open up like our restaurants inside. It's only been outside. Um, yeah, California has been really strict, but I, I still go, I still go out and do things, but it's more like I go to the beach where you don't have to be around people. Like you can still be far or like the park. I, you know what I mean? Like I social distance myself, but I have to do things because I can't be home all the time. I go crazy. Mm -hmm. It's too much, yeah. but yeah. 
Yeah. We've been open for a little while. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like we I, did kind of shut up. When did you guys, when did you guys, like how long were you guys shut down for? But they never technically shut us down. Yeah. But like schools and um, public places. I would say it was about a, a month or two, maybe. Oh my God. Maybe that might be too long. I don't have any kids, so I don't know. Like off the top of my head, but I know like coworkers. It started spring break and then it like gradually extended. So I remember them being like, "Well, I have to work from home because my kids are home." Um, but I want to say probably about two months because it's March. Because by summertime it was open again. Like That's they fine. did like fifty percent capacity at restaurants, and then I think we're at, supposedly at seventy five now. But every time I go out to eat, like it's always full. Cool. It doesn't look like it's closed. Yeah. And I, I mean, of course, there's a lot of businesses that like stayed open and stuff here, you know, like that they just were like, eh, whatever. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's crazy mm -hmm. that. But like, and there's a lot of people that I talk to that, you know, their weight loss surgery got put on hold, you know, or got pushed back or whatever yeah. the case may be. And then, um, how do you feel? Do you feel like, do you feel like all of this has affected your like journey so far with? the surgery and just what you're doing day, day like daily the surgery wasn't effective I was scared though that like at the end of the year they were going to cancel elective surgeries because the numbers did start to go up here in Florida yeah um, but they, I was thankful that um but I actually know a girl who she like had gotten sick with COVID um like maybe three weeks before surgery and she was scared that they were going to cancel her and they didn't she just had to be like on super precaution um when she had the surgery when she was in her room um but I, w I don't think so um I think that I was fortunate enough to have it at the end of the year but I don't think that it's really inhibited anything that I've done or have yeah. to do yeah no yeah because people ask me too because i was like when when everything started shutting down i was like maybe what like 10 months post-op nine months post-op something like that so i mean i was still in my year mark you know um and yeah i what i like i'm the type of person where it's like if you want something bad enough you just have to figure out how to do it you know yeah. what i mean i'm not like oh no you know because then it's like okay I mean, you know, we all know that get the surgery. It's like, this is once in a lifetime. So if you waste, and especially in the first year. So if you waste that first year, it's on you. And I've said it before on another podcast, but my doctor was really blunt with me. And he basically told me like, this is once in a lifetime. Whatever experience you experience in this year is not an excuse to like, not lose the weight. Because if you don't lose the weight, you just threw away the surgery, basically, you know? Um, right. And, and I totally agree with that because, you know, anyone could, I could have been like, oh no, like I'm working from home now. Like, let me just eat and then not lose weight. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's really like how bad you want it and just setting up your own routines regardless of what's happening. Yeah, I do find myself like comparing people like oh, yeah. um, Jade, I think you're going to talk to her soon. Yeah. Her and I actually had a day and I see her numbers. I'm like, oh. I haven't lost that much. I wish I would have lost that much. So I do find myself like playing the comparing game, but I'm like, no, like you're not exercising as much as you should. You probably don't get as much water in as you should. Like if you worked harder, you would probably do it. At, but at the same time, it's like, I know I'm not, not losing. Yeah. So I'm just too hard on myself, but. No. Um, yeah. yeah. And that's For what sure. like, I love, like, I love social media. I have like a love hate relationship with social media because <laughs> we, we all do that. I do that. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, Oh, like, I feel like we always want something that we don't have. You know what I mean? And yes. like, I always tell myself when I start feeling like I'm human and I'm going to be straight up when I start feeling some type of way, when I look at someone's Instagram post where it's like a jealousy thing, I'm like, Paulina, why are you jealous? Why not like be inspired by that and get up and go do something? You know what I mean? So that's what I'm trying and to they work do. With. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's bad. Like we shouldn't think like that. It's normal, right? We're human. We're going to think like that. But when I have those thoughts, I'm like trying to flip it in my head. Like, hold up. Why are you feeling like that? Like, what are you not doing? You know? So no, yeah, it's hard to not compare when you're on social media, but. Mm -hmm. But, but I it's love also inspiring. Like, I'm gonna... Huh? Mm -hmm. No, I said, yeah, for sure. When you're, um, 
when you see these people, it's like, now I'll just be your hype woman. Like, I'm going to hype you up. I'm going to tell you you're beautiful. You're doing a great job. And that, that is inspiring because it's like, okay, like that pushes me harder to be like, all right, I know that now people are looking at me too. So now that I'm getting more attention, I'm just like, okay, be more inspiring. Like, be uncomfortable. Be like yourself. Because I was very like hesitant at the beginning of, you know, putting my business on social media but I was like you know what I'm gonna do it like just like I found you and I found other people I like went on a follow spree and I'm like I just want to follow people that I'm gonna get this motivation from and now it's happening to me so I'm just about it you got to show the good the bad the ugly and push these people too because they need it we're all at the end of the human we're all we all need the love yeah and we're all and I feel like I never knew, like, before I got my surgery, I didn't know there was, like, this whole community, honestly, and, like, when I started, it started by, like, just looking up, like, hashtags or whatever, right, and I was like, hold up, like, what is all this, you know, because it is inspiring, and it is, you know, um, there was a lot of people that I followed in the beginning, and, like, now, that obviously, they're way further out in their journey, and I'm just like, man, like, it goes by so fast, but I, like I said, love, hate relationship with social media, because when I get on social media, and I'm like, if I want to eat something, I get on there, and I see someone, someone, (laughs) someone's running, someone's at the gym, someone's doing something, you know, (laughs) and I'm just like, okay, never mind, (laughs) so, no, I, I, yeah, I don't know if you've seen them, the ALG, like, the accountability life group, Uh and, girl, they be talking, like, the SDC, the stop, drop, chug, and, or, like, the fit, it's ALG, um, accountability life group, um, Jarp's journey. And I think his name is fit D rock. His name's David. They started it. Yeah. Like it's a community of just ability. And, um, on Wednesday nights we have a call and we all get together, talk about our week, our goals and stuff like that. But then (laughs) they, once you join in, like, if you want accountability, they're going to give you accountability. So like they'll tag me and like, the they do hashtag sdc which is stop drop chug yeah so it's like take a picture of you drinking your water or gym check-in so take a picture of you at the gym and i'm like i'm sitting here working like eating chips and i'm like oh it's like okay put the chips down go get your water like it and it's good because it's like that's what i need i need that push and it is good and it's like you know they're all sending me like working out i'm like all right let me get up and go for a walk like there's no need for me to sit at this job for 10 hours a day and not get up like you can take 30 minutes and go get your steps in and that's what I do and then I'm like all right I'm gonna post my picture for my accountability and I'm gonna get my butt up and I'm gonna go for a walk and that's what I've been doing and it has helped for that's, sure that's so finding people like, love you but they're yeah, I didn't even know I, w- I was trying to find them on um it's Instagram right yes so it I think you have to type out accountability life group it's like a black like triangle thing I think it's like hands Oh, I found it. Oh, yeah. yeah that's so cool. I, he had his um, BSG, I, I think, a couple years ago. And then I think David lost his weight naturally. I'm not 100% sure of their stories, to be honest with you. But yeah. um, it's a mixed community. People who do it naturally, people who do it keto, people that have the surgery. That's and cool. they all just come together and hold you accountable. It, it's It's been great, for sure. I've only been a part of it for a few weeks, but it's definitely cool to get that community. I think we all need it. And like, I'm, I'm a big part of like a church here in Tampa. And like, they even say it like, even in a, in a spiritual community, if you're not a part of a church, you're a spiritual orphan. Like you're doing this on your own and nobody can walk this life alone. Yeah. So no, I'm yeah. all- it definitely helps having a group. I know that for sure. Um, because yeah, I mean, like there's days where I'm kind of like, should I take a break from social media? Because it, 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 like I said, sometimes it's kind of like, it takes over, you know, but it's such a big part of like motivating me to stay. And even like with these podcasts and stuff, like it, I love hearing people early in their journey. And I love having people that are further out than me and the same as me. And it's not even like a comparison. It's just to see like, what are they doing that works for them? What are, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you're learning from each other. And, I feel and like that's, that's what I love. Like, I do spend way too much time on Instagram, but it's, it, I like seeing that. what products do you use? What, like, TV shows are you watching? It, it could be weight loss related and not weight loss related. Yeah. Like, what lipstick are you wearing? Like, yeah. let me know. I don't, yeah. I don't care. No, yeah, so, I know. I love, I love social media, but 
I mean, yeah, it's pros and cons, <laughs> you know? But I haven't experienced like the negativity. I know I see some people and they're like, man, you guys are just so negative and you judge me. And like, that would break me too. So I know that you've probably been in a lot longer when you have a bigger following, that's the risk that you take. Yeah. And I don't know how to that, but I definitely know it wouldn't be well. So yeah, I, I mean, I've gotten, thoughts. yeah, I've gotten negative comments, but not as much as I thought I would. Um, but no, I do for sure. Mm -hmm. Like now that I'm being more open with like my tummy tuck, that's where I'm starting to get more of the negative things mm -hmm. because people just have something to say. And it's funny because like on YouTube, it's always people with like their picture. That's like a cartoon or something. And I'm just like, dude, like, I don't even know mm -hmm. what you look like or anything, you know? And it's like, it's annoying because I've had people literally write like, um, like, tell me where you got it. So I don't know where to go. Like where I, so I know not to go there. Just like stupid things. And I'm just like, okay, cool. You know? And I don't even respond to them. Mm -hmm. um because it's annoying mm -hmm. it's just like it's mm -hmm. i don't know i don't care like you know it's it's yeah. just people are always it's like that in real life like people are gonna be annoying and rude and if you let that get to you it's like you let the whole day go to waste you know what i mean so mm -hmm. i mean whatever. Absolutely. it is what it is but mm -hmm. what are you so you are wait three months post-op right three so what are your what are your goals like do you have like a I don't like to say goal weight because I had a one I wanted to be 150 150 I was stuck on that I never made it to 150 and I'm fine um yeah. with that but do you have like what are your goals for like let's say your year mark um I definitely want to get out of the 200s I want to see 100 so bad like I like you, I would love to be one. Like that's a beautiful number. Yeah. Is it realistic? Probably. Um, however, I I want to be out of the twos. I never want to see a two in front of my scale. Like I want to be in the ones. I want to be able to fit into like a size, you know, 12, 14 pants. Like I don't want to be in the twenties and it's I want to be able to go to a regular store and fit in regular clothes. And like, I've always been a huge advocate of like being plus size and embracing your size and all that stuff. But to go to like Target and fit in the regular section, I would, I dream of that. I dream of that. So that is definitely like top goals of just getting out of the 200s, um, having a better schedule, like routine wise, like being able to like wake up early, you know, work go to like some sort of exercise, eat dinner at a d reasonable hour and get to bed in time. Like don't yeah. feel like you have to work time and then just wait, stay up till 1 a.m. and snack all night and, <laughs> and yeah. then go to sleep. Um, and if it's just like, like I want a healthy lifestyle because yeah. I think that just since college, I was just so programmed of, I worked or I went to school during the day, I worked overnight and it's just been a vicious cycle ever since. And it's like, I'm just work driven that after this year, I told myself when I had the surgery, it was very impulsive. But at the same time, I was like, I'm putting myself first. Yeah. So I'm putting my health first. I'm doing this to make myself better. And it's like, you have people ask you your why, like I said earlier, and I, I honestly just don't know. And now that I think about it, and it's just, I want to put myself first. Yeah. Like, I don't have kids but I want to have kids. So it's like, I need to set myself up for success to have kids. Cause I don't want to be high risk. I don't want to be bedridden. I don't want to like have a risk of, you know, being sick or losing the child and it, it, it'll be hard. So yeah. start now. No. Yeah. Um, so important. And you will experience mm -hmm. all of those things you just mentioned, because I'm telling you, like, I remember seeing 199. I remember being able to go to target and buy clothes. Like, and it still seems so brand new to me, especially because COVID and over here, you can't even go into the dressing room. So it's like, you know, you grab things and it's like, the only place you can try stuff on is Old Navy. That's literally the only place that you can try stuff on. Yeah. Like, I love Old Navy, but it's like, I want to try other things, you know? Um, Same. But it happens, like, I don't know. How do you, do you feel like it's, it's happening slow or do you feel like it's, it's going fast? How do you feel right now in this moment? Can you hear me? It's like buffering. You broke up a little. Okay. Um, okay. Say that again. I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Um, how do you feel? Like, how do you feel? What was I saying? Um, 
I totally forgot. I blanked out. Oh, we were talking about, like, about like this. Hold on, sorry. You keep like breaking out. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. You keep getting like stuck on the, like your <laughs> face freezes. I know. The Wi Fi. That'll happen. I hear you, but I don't see you. Okay, there you are. Can you see me now? <laughs> yeah, you're okay. We're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think we're good now. Um, no. Oh, okay. what I was saying is, do you feel like it's going slow right now? Or do you feel like it's happening pretty fast? Like with your weight loss? I know earlier you mentioned like kind of like comparing or whatever, but do you feel like it's happening pretty fast or slow? Um, I think it started out fast. And then it, now it's slowed down a little bit for sure. Like I remember the first month, I think I lost like 30 mm -hmm. and then now the past two months have been like 10 a month, but I'm like, you gotta be grateful G because before you weren't losing anything before you were eating like crap. Like yeah. now you've definitely just improved by eating. You've improved by like being active and yeah. exercising and you know, the, the surgery definitely was a push start, but at the same time, like you still got put in work, but I definitely think it's slow. It's, it's slow for me personally, yeah. but it, it scares me. Like, I know loose skin is like a, a big thing for everybody, but it's like, you know, maybe the myth, if you lose slow, you won't have as much loose skin, but I know that's not true. So. Yeah. And I mean, the loose skin is not, like, it's definitely a thing, you know, obviously. And it's hard. And I'm not going to say like, don't let that get to you because it got to me. And I'm, it's so weird because with me, it got to me about three months before my tummy tuck, which is weird because I had it way longer than that. But the three months before my tummy tuck is when I noticed myself like wearing big sweaters again. And like, I would just be like, especially being home, I would just like get my husband's t-shirt or whatever. And like, I wasn't dressing like cute. Like I was when I was like losing the weight, you know? Because it got to the point where I'm like, hold on, like I've lost all this weight. I'm not, I don't want to lose anymore, but this skin is here. What do I do with it? You know? And then I was like, okay. Right. And then I kept going back and forth on like having kids first or getting a tummy tuck. And then it started getting to a point where like I had rashes and I was just so irritated with my stomach. And that's why I did it. Cause a lot of people still ask me like, okay, well you're probably, or they tell me you're probably going to have to get it touched up again. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever. Um, but it, it's something I don't regret, but also don't think so far ahead. You know what I mean? I feel like it's so yeah. overwhelming when you think so far ahead because it's, things are going to happen and it's better just to focus in the moment. Honestly, the day when people ask me like, what, what is your biggest advice? It's literally thinking about the day you're in. Cause if you think about yeah. even like next week, it's too overwhelming because you're thinking about weight. How much protein do I have to eat in the next week? How much do I want to lose? It's too much, you know? Um, yeah. And I wanted it's to ask you, what's, how's your relationship with the scale? Do you weigh yourself every day? Or do you weigh yourself every week? Mm -hmm. Or like, what do you, what do you? I definitely do every week. Um, it's out. But I, there are days where I feel compelled to step on it and I'm like I know like you haven't lost anything like you just weighed yourself yesterday like you're fine um I don't think I have an unhealthy relationship with it right now yeah. um and I don't want to get there but I would say like once a week um but there are a couple of days a week where I'll just step on I'm like oh I ate good yesterday so let me see what if anything happened yeah. um or if I exercised really hard that day let me see what happened mm -hmm. but mm, it's okay yeah I would I put it away that's yeah. the thing. I should have put it. It's hard. Cause it's hard. Cause like the first year, my first year, I would weigh myself every day. And I hate to admit that because I, I yeah. don't do that now, but for literally the first 12 months, I weighed myself every day. And I probably have videos where I lied and say I didn't, but I'm being honest right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I did because That's all that matters. yeah. Cause you, like you said, when you work out and stuff, you want to see like, did it work? You know? Um, which is ridiculous because there's going to be days like 
I mean, the time of the month or you drink too much water or whatever. Yeah. And you think you gained weight and you didn't, or like, for me, it was like, I was gaining muscle. Cause I was, I was weight training every, five days a week. So it was like, you know, I could see the, the, and that was another thing is I was weight training so hard, but because of my loose skin, like I would tell my personal trainer, I feel like I'm doing this for no reason. Like my stomach is not going to change because of my loose skin, you know? So I'm so, I actually yeah. got cleared yesterday to start working out. So I'm so excited about it mm -hmm. um, because I haven't worked out in like, to be honest, in like two and a half months or something. And it's, um, it sucks. You know, I'm not going to say I love working out cause I don't, I don't want to be fake like that, but it definitely makes me feel way better, you know, to work out. And I'm mm -hmm. excited to see like toning and stuff. Cause I don't know. People think just cause I got a tummy tuck that it's like, Oh, everything's gone. Uh, uh, because you get a tummy tuck and then you start noticing other flaws, which is annoying, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But, and I think too, when you do the journey, like people say they see it in me and I'm like, I don't see it yet. Like, I don't see what you see, but now, now like taking a picture, like I remember for so long, not taking a selfie. Yes. And I used to be like the selfie queen, like, oh yeah, I want to take selfies. But then when I started getting heavier, really big, like I wouldn't take pictures anymore. And it's, it's crazy now, like seeing, like wanting to take pictures and like doing the comparison. I'm like, oh, okay. I see it now in the pictures. And then now clothes. Like I remember I would just buy bigger clothes because I'm like, I'm not going to, I always told like, I'm going to embrace being big and I'm just going to buy plus size clothes and I'm going to work it, you know? And then now putting on those clothes, I'm like, these are way too big now. Yeah. Like, that's where I see. But like, see, looking in a mirror, I'm like, I don't know what's the difference. Like, my stomach's still big. Like, my arms are still big. I don't see it. But definitely pictures and clothes are a huge thing. Yeah. And take a million yeah. pictures. A million pictures. Mm -hmm. I even remember, it's so crazy. When I lost 100 pounds, I thought, like, my life couldn't get better. Like, you lose a hundred pounds and you're like, what, you know? And to think about it at a hundred pound weight loss, I was 204, right? I still didn't even see the hundred. Um, but I remember feeling mm -hmm. so amazing. And I remember, and now looking at that picture when I was 204, I'm still chunky. I was 204 still, you know? And, uh, but I was so happy, you know? And it's so weird because mm -hmm. like the last, um, cause people are like, when did you notice the difference? I noticed the difference. But when I look at pictures now, like the last 30 pounds is when it was like dramatic for me for some reason, um, from, cause I got down mm -hmm. to 60, like that's, I go right now, I'm like 160 to 165, but my lowest was 160. And then I gained like 10 pounds and then I got my tummy tuck and my, mm -hmm. my, my skin weighed 10 pounds, which is crazy. Cause my doctor says skin doesn't weigh wow. that so when he's like, we removed 10 pounds, he's like, that's a lot. He's like, I haven't removed that much. And I don't know how long. Um, so then I got back to 160, but I don't know. It's just, it, it's, it's, I don't like to put a number to it. Cause like I said, I wanted to be 150 and I feel like if I would have got to 150, I would have been too skinny. There's times now that I look at a picture and I'm like, I don't know. You see, it's like too skinny, too big. It's annoying. I think the lowest weight that I got doing natural weight loss was like 240. Mm -hmm. and I know when I get past 240 I'm gonna be ecstatic and I'm like and now I think about it now I'm like that's 25 pounds away like I've already, ah. already, you're gonna get there so I think when I see that like just the 240 it, that's just gonna be crazy to me because it's like I see myself I'm like I, I was this weight four years ago and so I'm like I can't really this is nothing like I haven't done work so now it's like, I, that's the mental state that I have to get out of. So I'm like yeah. telling myself like, no, you have lost six or 50 pounds. Like yeah. you're too, I don't know, like you've done a great job now. Keep going. Yeah. So like, this would have been a way that like my biggest problem that I had losing weight naturally was I would be great for a month and then I fall off the bandwagon. So it's like you lose 10, gain 10 back, lose 20, gain 10 back. And then yeah. like, eventually that all accumulates back up so it's like now that this is just a continuous cycle that I know is going to help me it's going to be incredible in the long run yeah so that was me too and like you mentioned Herbalife like I still use um I still use some of their products yes um mm -hmm. I used like I put the, the aloe the collagen I love those love I love the aloe oh. Uh, the protein shakes I don't do mm -hmm. because their protein shakes only have nine grams of protein which is not enough to meet like what I want to meet. 
Um, mm -hmm. And um, I've used a lot of their products. Even like I've even used their shampoo and conditioner, which I love, by the way. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. ever used it. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I yeah. love that. Like if I, if I don't. Sorry, no, it keeps me cutting off. That. Hold on, sorry. If I don't do the aloe or the probiotic, I don't go to the bathroom. Like, and then I'm like, oh man, I haven't gone to the bathroom like in a day or two. Like, let me drink some aloe. Like, I totally forget. And then I'm like, I regret it in the long run, but definitely aloe. Oh, that stuff is gold. Yeah. Do you, which one do you like? What flavor do you like? The mandarin. Really? I like that I like one too. The I love the mango one, but yeah, the cranberry one I'm not so big on. Do you like the cranberry? <laughs> No, it's like too bitter. Yeah. But I remember you saying in one of your videos you didn't like orange flavored things. Yeah, but I do now though. It's so weird. You see, like it changes because I don't like. Okay, so I buy the Skittles and I I have the the Skittle flavoring. It's uh mm -hmm. uh oh my gosh. It's there's an orange flavor, grape flavor, yeah. and then my favorite's the strawberry. And I tend to have the orange last, but I do <laughs> like it. It actually tastes really good with the mango aloe. It's really. Oh, I might have to try. I do have. To, I like the Skittles one too. I feel like the sweeter the the flavoring, I don't really care for. I like the soury mm. uh, flavors more. I yeah. agree. Those Skittles are good. Yeah. So do you good. do the um, collagen from Herbalife? I have it, um, but I don't do it. I should, though, because now my hair's starting to fall out. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. I do it. Yeah, I just do it all together. Like, I do the, the sometimes. Sometimes I just like how the aloe tastes alone because it's so, I, I think it's really good. But um, the collagen, yeah, the collagen and the aloe. And then the probiotic I did do for a while, but now like the aloe is enough for me now because I do it every day. But in the beginning mm -hmm. when I started, I definitely did the probiotic and that it works miracles. Like it's literally like when you stop, you're kind of like, why did I stop? Like there's been times where I stopped drinking my aloe or like I have to order it and I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for it. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I love their products. But yeah, I did Herbalife, I don't know how many times during same. <laughs> a decade and like you said i would do really good for a month lose 20 i could lose 20 pounds 25 pounds in a month like I, I would lose weight fast and then i would gain 40 and i was like all right cool like what it, the heck you know yeah. so it's frustrating and that's why yeah. i feel like this is more permanent but like we said i mean we can get, gain the weight back and i think it's just getting all the skills in the in the year you know yes so yeah. So, okay. So, um, I always ask this question cause I love to ask this question, but what advice would you give to someone that is literally like, it's the night before they're super nervous they're waiting to get surgery. What advice would you give them? <laughs> give to them. <laughs> I know it's like putting you on like blast, but I love to hear these answers. <laughs> Take a stool softener. <laughs> for sure. Yes. Seriously. Drink your <laughs> aloe before take something what i am a reg tmi but i am a regular number twoer okay? yeah and i remember i didn't go to the bathroom for like three days and i was crying because i was in too. so much pain. take four i don't care what you do take it yep. um or drink your after um yep i don't know um definitely take a week off like if you can get FMLA, don't try and go back to work right away. I remember I went back to work right away and I just, I, I wanted to just relax and I wanted to sleep and I wanted to just recover and I didn't. Um, so definitely if you can just recover, get a good list of Netflix or books to read so that you, that way you can recover. Um, and get a, get a support person. Like even if it's your best friend, your mom, like somebody that you can just vent to because you're going to be in pain. You're going to be uncomfortable. Like you want, you're going to be crabby. So you definitely want somebody that you can talk to for yeah. sure. So um, huge. It is so, I remember my mom being here and like, she'd be like, all right, sweetie, like, let's go for a walk. <laughs> I'm going to want to go. I'm tired. She's like, no, come on, let's just go one block and then yeah. we'll do another one. Or then you would come inside and go back to bed. And I was like, okay. Um, yeah, so I would say that. I don't really have any, like, good ones. Okay. No, that's, that's good. If you're, if you're nervous, too, ask the doctor to give you something to calm you down. Because I remember I was good. Like, I was going in there like a champ, and then it hit me. And then I started having, like, a full-blown panic attack. 
And I was like, I can't breathe. Like what they're like, we'll give you something. I don't even remember rolling out of the pre-op room. Really? So if you were in this, yes. I remember like, cause it was like, all right, we're going to take you in. Cause I like, you go, you check in, you're in like the little holding place. And my mom was next to me. And then all of a sudden it started hitting me. I'm like, oh my gosh, they, they, I'm all wired up. I'm all hooked up now. Like they're about to take me and hit me. So um, they're like, we'll give you something. It's okay. And then they told me afterwards, they're like, you could have asked for something um, because then my blood pressure went really high. And so um, they were like, you could have asked for something. I was like, well, I didn't know. Like, I thought you weren't supposed to really take anything. So they told me now, like, if you're anxious or an anxious person, definitely ask for something before you get, or even to take the night before you can do. So I was, that would be, that would be good to know because yeah, anxiety kicks in. You think you're good. And Mm. yeah, I remember that's how I felt um, for my, for my tummy tuck because it's just so fast. And then like with, I feel like with COVID it's like, I don't know is there like a limit or what because I literally woke up and they're like okay you're good like got my wheelchair put me in the wheelchair and, and took me out like because the will the tummy tuck is fast you know with my VSG mm-hmm. I was there for did you have to stay overnight for your VSG yeah, yeah. one yeah. night or how many nights just one yeah my surgery was like at eight in the morning and then I was back in my room or I woke up at 12 my mom said I was only out for like 45 minutes. Like the doctor was there and back um, after 45 minutes. So then she was in the room with me while I was sleeping. I woke up around noon. And then the next morning I went home around 7.30. So like 12, 24 hours. Yeah, it's, I love, like I was there for two nights, but it was because my doctor, um, he was so strict on like how much water I had to drink. And I was so nauseous the first day that I was like, Ugh, I wasn't having it. I didn't even want to walk the first day. So he made me stay two nights, but. I don't know. It's different. I had a checklist in me. I had to drink like 12 ounces. I had to pass gas. I had to pee and I had to walk. Those were the four. And I didn't pass gas and they let me go. So they're like, she's good. Yeah. Because we're so, we're so like full of gas. Obviously. I remember I see those pictures of that day and I was like, obviously I was big, but like on top oh, of like with the gas, God. you're like, it's crazy, huh? My mom of me in the bed and I was like that was me that's crazy I know I have one of me in my bed that my sister took and I was like that's insane like it's insane I only have one I I I didn't know I didn't start YouTube till like six months after and I wish I would have started from the beginning because I don't even have I don't have videos or anything from like surgery like uh close to that date or whatever um but I was I look at the pictures and I'm like, oh my God, that's insane. Like, I still can't believe that's me. But then I look at myself like in this video and I can't believe that's me. So it's weird. Mm -hmm. I have days where I still, I wake up and I think I'm huge. And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know it's so crazy, but is there anything else Mm -hmm. that you want to add or chat about? How do you feel like, I know everybody waits for like, I know, again, talking in the future, like your tummy tuck, like how, um, like, what do you recommend for people who want a tummy tuck? Like, is it something to like wait for, or if you want to get it? Honestly, um, listen to what you want is my recommendation because people are going to tell you like, you don't have kids. I don't, I don't have kids. And people are always going to tell you, wait till you have kids because they don't live in the body that you live in. Like that was my mind. Like if you watch my previous videos, I say it a million times. I want to get tummy tuck, but after I have kids, after I have kids, after I have kids, but then it started really getting to me mentally, you know, and I still felt like I was 300 pounds. Um, so people ask me like, do you have to be a certain weight? When I went in, I was 170 um for my tummy tuck right and I asked him do I need to lose more weight and he was like no he's like you don't have to lose any more weight but then there's other doctors that might tell you to lose more weight um there's people that get tummy tucks at 200 pounds at 210 it just really depends on your body type and if they feel that is it skin or is it still fat you know what I mean like in your stomach or like if you want to get your arms done or whatever whatever it is that you want to get done um but I definitely feel like you need to be close to your goal weight, number one, you know, mm-hmm. and then go and see, I only saw one doctor, um, which is weird, but 
I mean, ask because mm -hmm. you might go and they might deny you, but don't let that be the reason that you don't get your tummy tuck. If you're content with your weight at that time and you truly feel that it's loose skin, um, I'm sure another doctor will agree with you. You know what I mean? But I definitely recommend it. Even if you, you know, like me, um, I don't have kids and I want to have kids in the future. I would do it a million times over and over again. Um, yeah before kids because I was miserable for a couple months there and I was a little like I'm such like a positive person but my husband was like dude it's getting to you and even the night before I was like do I want to do it because I was so scared I was like am I doing the wrong thing like what and he was like no you're not like you've been talking about this you haven't been happy the last couple of months I don't want to say it was a long time that I was like depressed it was like for three months it was really getting to me so I'm really really happy that I did it um but I also want to say, like, enjoy the moment and enjoy every part of your journey. Because even with me getting a tummy tuck, I thought removing my skin, I was going to be like, oh my gosh, I love, like, I love my body. I really do. But there's other times where I'm like, I got my stomach removed and I didn't do a 360, which a 360 is all the way on your back. I don't have that much loose skin on my back. But now that my tummy's flat, my back looks chubby. Mm hmm which is weird, but it's because my stomach is so flat. Now it's like, I turn around and I'm like, wait, what the heck? I never noticed my back fat. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's annoying, but I really feel like it's just, you really have to appreciate the moment you're in, but it doesn't mm -hmm. mean to like not look to the, to the future. I don't know. I kind of ranted, but you get it. You, mean, no, you understand what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you get me. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 you, I got you. it's just hard because I feel like you always want to look into the future. You know what I mean? With anything like me, yeah. I'm like, oh, why well, do I do want to get my breasts done? That's for sure. I want to do that. But I have to enjoy my moment right now. You know, mm -hmm. celebrate the 50 enjoy pounds the loss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Celebrate the 50 pounds loss, the 75, the 78. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Because it's so, so easy yeah. to like get lost in like wanting more always i feel like that's just us as humans mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, yeah do you think about plastics like is that something that you are gonna want in the future i think for sure my stomach that's just always been my biggest insecurity even like when i was it was like i was so toxic to myself when i was younger i'll be like okay, my pouch is only growing like a little bit. Like as long as it doesn't grow any bigger than this and I'll, I'll be okay. And then now it's just like hanging at this point and it's like, that's just my biggest insecurity. So I know eventually I want to do that. I don't really think it, again, you want to be like, oh yeah, well, after kids, but at the same time, it's like, is my mental health more important than like worrying about my skin stretching again? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, because I've seen like, like, there's. sorry, but keep going. Um, I know like there's a girl, I think she lives in Canada. Um, her name's Jasmine or something. And like, she got pregnant right after she had her tummy tuck oh, wow. and like, she didn't even look, it was just so crazy. Like it was, and it's, so it's like just the way the body works, like it, it's a muscle and you're stretching or you're, you know, cutting the muscle. So it'll go right back. It, and being pregnant for nine months with a baby is different than being overweight your whole life. Yeah. So I think that that too is, it'll be a different when it goes back to normal. Yeah. And something so I definitely too, think um, that I wanted to add, my doctor, the advice that he gave me was like, do you want to have one kid? And I was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe two. And he's like, okay, so let's say you have two kids, right? Let's say you have the two kids back to back, right? So that's two years of your life, right? So, um, for two more years, you're going to have all this loose skin during pregnancy uh rashes like mm -hmm. i had rashes you know and that wasn't until the end i didn't have rashes in the beginning but it was the more weight that i lost the saggier my skin got and the more rashes that i got so when i was 200 pounds mm -hmm. i wasn't like i wasn't getting rashes i wasn't even thinking tummy tuck honestly but then when i got down to 160 mm -hmm. i was like dude like i'm getting more rashes now that i lost more weight and it's bad, you know, but that's what my doctor told me. Like, do you think that you can live? Would you be happy to live for two more years with this loose skin, you know, have a pregnancy belly, have a baby and deal with that rashes for all that time. And I was like, when he said that to me, I was like, oh no, there's no way that I can't do that. You know what I mean? No. So that's what really made my, and you, and you risk it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 
infections and all that craziness. And I was like, no, thank okay. you. Yeah. Cut so, it off. <laughs> I know. And I'm super content and I'm really, really happy. And I'm really thankful that I was able to do it. You know, not everyone's able to do it. So I'm mm -hmm. just super grateful that I was able to do that because I know that it's, mm -hmm. and it's life changing. You know, it's losing the weight is one thing, but then getting rid of that skin is a whole other, it's a whole, it, and then it's like, it's like you go to sleep and it's gone. You know, with BSG, you're losing the weight. It's happening yeah. fast, but it's like a year, two years. Uh -huh. But like with the tummy tuck, you go in with it and then you wake up and you're like, where is it? You know, it's so like mind blowing. But I'm like, huh? you tuck it into leggings and then yeah. you, and I was like, you, you tuck it into leggings, you put the oversized sweater, you put the, the maxi dress on. You, I would, I always dress to cover it up. So to be able to wear clothes or like high waisted jeans and a crop top girl, like I can't wait till summertime for you so you can just show it off. Like that's so exciting. I know. I'm so excited. And it's crazy because like, I can't, they said you can't try to get pregnant until like your year mark. And I'm like, okay, like I want to have kids soon. And I'm like, okay, a year, you know, but, and other people are like, oh my God, and you're just going to waste that you got a tummy tuck. I'm like, dude, I'm done with this conversation because like, yeah, I'm happy with how I look, but I'm doing it more for like my health, you know? So whatever. I, I like realize that I don't have to explain myself to everyone. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi. All right. Well, before we go, I want to take a quick selfie because I want to post it on my story. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. My <laughs> phone is being super slow. Right. Sorry. Hold on. No, my, just... Instagram, my Instagram app has been like acting up. I don't know why. Oh, there it works. Okay. Are you ready? Hold on. Let me get it. Wait, I don't know where to position my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. How cute. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for being on. Is there anything else that you want to add before we go? I, it's always awkward to end it to end this because I was like, I don't want to cut anyone off. But no, I just thank you for like letting me talk and just you know share my story. Thank you for being inspiring. Like like I said, I followed you because I was like, she's got the same body type as me. Like she looks like me like we're good so i just thank you for inspiring and like pushing uh, me and then other women you know and even men too like i'm sure they follow us and it's like if they can do it we can do it so i'm gonna have a guy on my keep podcast on being positive. Next, next week and i've never had a man on my podcast so i'm excited for it because a lot of people have been messaging me asking me um because it's di their journey's different you know what mm -hmm. i mean so i'm really really excited to have him on and just hear yeah. what he has to say but no, yeah, for sure. And just enjoy all these moments. It goes by so fast. And just, and like I said, celebrate every milestone, even if it's like you followed your schedule for one day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's really important. But okay, but well, thank you so much. Sorry, it keeps cutting off and I feel like I'm cutting you off. You know how many times people have told me on my comments that I cut off my guests and I'm like, I'm not doing it on purpose. It's because like, number one, it's on Zoom. So if I talk, yeah, it like cuts off or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, I'm not cutting them off on purpose. Like, why do you have to write that? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. But, um, <laughs> hater. She ain't cut it. Okay right i know but this podcast will it's gonna go on next <laughs> week so i'll tag you on there um and then i'll post it on my stories and everything but it will go up next uh wednesday sounds good all right okay well thank you for being okay. on have sounds a good night good. bye you're welcome Bye. thank you thank you thank you so much for watching gianna thank you so much for being so open with your journey so far and just sharing your struggles your ups and your downs after weight loss surgery i can't it's still so early in your journey and I just can't wait to follow you on your journey and see how you are doing in three months and six months and nine months. And I would love to have you on again so that we can chat about what has changed. But truly, truly, I am grateful that you shared your story and I know that it's helping a lot of other people um, like it is me. I get inspired by everyone's story and I'm just, like I said, grateful for having you on. If you guys haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment down below, and have a beautiful rest of your week. Bye!